Hello, hello, Karen here. Today I am going to show you a foolproof way to pick colors for your art journal page. Now for this you are going to need some sort of artwork and I am using Mucha's artwork today and the colors are very obvious in here the, the you know that this color combination works and so having these colors already kind of pre-selected for you really takes the guesswork out of picking colors so today i'm going to be working in a little homemade art journal i'm going to be using this mucha artwork and I have selected a bunch of inexpensive craft paints that match the colors on these pieces of art. One of the reasons I absolutely love these inexpensive craft paints is because you can get them in a wide variety of colors and shades. So I don't have to try to mix things. I can just pick them out, match them up, go, yeah that's going to work. Some other things that I have selected are some tissue papers. Now this green is a little bit bright, but you know, I can probably tone it down with some of this brown. And again, same thing with this one, a little bit bright, but it doesn't hurt to have a little bit of shock of color in your artwork. And I say that again, a little bit of shock of color. <laughs> other things that I've picked out, are some washi tape and these are picked out color matching and kind of style matching a style matching the way that this feels i also have some scissors and i have an exacto blade because i'm thinking about making this page a little bit interactive a little uh, i'll talk about that a little bit more as we go forward I also have some matte medium and a paintbrush. Oh, one more thing. I also selected out some other pages from the book that I got these images from. And I picked these out because I thought I might do use these as like background images, but I'm not too sure. But they're here and they're ready for me to, to get crafty. All right, so let's get crafty. Okay, so these are my main images that I have picked out. This right here is actually just from like the bottom of the page and um, somewhere on here it'll go in here. But what I'm thinking of doing is adding an image on each page. So I'm going to work on two page spreads, putting one behind and then maybe putting like this over the top and creating a little little peekaboo like window that would actually reveal her behind it. I don't know. I don't know how this is going to work out, but that is the idea that I have for today and I'm just going to get started. Okay, so like I said, I picked out these other images and I thought that they might make good backgrounds. So I'm going to go with that. I'm going to go with that. I'm just, just going to do it. Now, usually I glue these things down and then trim it off, but there's another way to do it. You can take your image and just create a little fold along the top edge of your journal. Oh wait, you know, there's no measuring required. And then I can just cut on that fold line. And this is just a little homemade art journal with a few pages of mixed media paper. Nothing special. I love working in these small art journals because I can finish one fairly quickly and it gives me a sense of completion. You know that satisfaction? 
And when I'm gluing this page down, I'm actually going to glue only half at a time. It's going to make it easier to align it. And since this paper for this, this book page that I'm using is kind of thick, I'm going to want to pre-crease it right there. Okay, now I can put down the second half. Now I could put like this over here on this edge. That might really work. Now this is just beautiful as it is, right? So now if I take this image and I just glue it down like that, it's going to be blended too much into the background, right? And and I don't want to do that. I want this to stand out a little bit more. And this is just a background. So I could take like some tissue paper and, you know, glue that down over the top. That'll help push it back. I could put down some white paint. I could put down some gesso. I think I'm going to do some paint. Now this is pretty opaque. So I'm going to want to water it down. Now I'm just going to use a wet brush for that. And you can see it's pushing it into the background really nicely. And I know a lot of people use gesso to push things into the background, but I find gesso takes uh, a lot longer to dry. So I like using these inexpensive craft paints. And I can do even more. Could add some of this tissue paper too. Now that didn't quite come out the way I wanted it to, and that is because I had the paint on my paintbrush. So I might have wanted to wash that off a little bit more and even dry this. You'll also notice that as the paint dries, it gets lighter. So when you put down paint, it's going to be darker. I love using tissue paper because it just blends right into that background. Oops, I didn't want to put that in the water. This becomes really transparent. Now I still have to do something over here because again, if I put that image down on there, I'm going to have this weird edge over here. So I could put this down, but then I still have a little bit of a gap, right? not going to matter that much. So I got a little bit at the top, a little bit at the bottom, but I also have, where'd it go? I also have this washi tape. So I could put down a strip of that. Okay, so I do have more of that. It's a Kind of an edging that follows throughout this whole book. And by the way, the book that I'm using is this book. It's just gorgeous. I picked that up at, at a pretty good discount. I'm always looking for art books like that. You can always find them at a discount. If you're patient, try half price books because people buy books like that and they're like, oh, this is so beautiful. And then they're like, okay, well, you know, I've looked at everything in it. That's why I like to, you know, I've had it for a while and 
it was just time to do something with it. Put this on the same direction as my other side. And then put down my washi tape. And yes, you can put this, you can put your washi tape directly down on top of your matte medium. It'll actually help it to adhere better. So if you're having troubles with your washi tape, not staying stuck, try gluing it down. Oh, that's just so pretty. Let's see, I need a little bit more glue. Okay. okay, I think I'm ready for this now. Doesn't mean I won't do more over here, but I'm ready to put this down. Now, I could put it over like that so that that shows over there, but I kind of like just overlapping it just a little bit. So I'm just overlapping it just a tiny bit on that washi tape. And since I am using a matte medium, I'm going to wipe it from the top of that washi tape because otherwise it's going to dull the um, sparkly, foily, something. I can't think. Metallic, that's the word. Metallic look. I don't want my metallic look to be dulled. Okay, so... I am going to put this image right on top of her. You know, it might be nice to add another circular element. And this is actually uh, a detail of the background that I used. Um, that might be nice because it will bring it forward, right? I don't think I want to add like another main image or something like that. I think I am going to cut out this. So anytime you have repeating elements on the page, it's going to be eye catching and, and not placing it in the center. That's also going to catch the eye more. Especially since this one's centered, having this one offset and maybe overlapping on this side as well. There's a lot of outlining done already, so this is going to fit in really nicely because a lot of these images already have a black line. So again, just using the artwork that you have and kind of mimicking what's already there. In fact, you could even go into, you know, some of these background images and bring them out with the pen. And I'm not too sure I liked what I just did there with those lines, but I'm just going to leave that for now. Okay, so time to make this a little interactive. For this, I'm going to use my craft knife and I've got a cutting mat I'm going to set behind here so that I can cut this out. Not working so well because it just wants to tear into there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to 
cut a little slit in here. So I just kind of cut a hole all the way through so I can get my scissors in here. Because the paper is just too wet to cut with a blade like that. Okay. I'm going to leave a little bit here so that I can just use this as a little window. I almost forgot about that. So that it'll open up. And now I can take this other image and position it underneath there. Get it where I want it. Go ahead, put matte medium over the rest of the page. Nice. Now we can go ahead and go back in here with the paint marker and maybe clean up this edge a little bit because it got a little messed up when I was doing the cutting. I can even make it a little bit bigger, a little bit wider. You can of course do this just with paint. You don't have to have a paint pen. Now I did something over here that I really wasn't that happy about. And it might be because the, they're just these two lines that are out here. Maybe I need to add more lines. You know, I can try that. In fact, I could just do some, well, I could, I could go ahead and keep tracing into the background. Or maybe I do some of my own lines. Eh, yeah, maybe. But I could take some paint too, and I could do some painting over the top of this. Again, I'm using the colors that are in the original artwork. Uh, I'm thinking that, you know, what might be going on, make myself a little palette here, is maybe those lines are just too, too dark, too strong. Maybe I paint over them. That kind of pushes them back, pushes that black back so it's not so striking. And I do want to leave the black around those circles though. See, they're already looking like they belong on the page a little bit more. A lot of times when we're working in our art journals, if you're not liking what you've done so far, maybe you haven't done enough. Just keep going. And there we go. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for joining me. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.